Well, a CBS News poll finds former President Donald Trump holds a commanding lead over his GOP rivals in the 2024 race. 61 percent of likely Republican primary voters said they would vote for the GOP frontrunner today. That puts him far ahead of Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, who is 43 points behind at 18 percent. Finn Gomez and Anthony Salvanto join us now to discuss. Finn is CBS News political director. Anthony is CBS News executive director of elections and surveys. He conducted this poll. So, Anthony, let's start with you. What are we learning about former President Trump's lead over the rest of the GOP field? Hey there, Nancy. What we've learned is that uh, the temperature outside has changed a little. The daylight's changed. But these numbers look a lot like August it's been pretty steady for Donald Trump, a big, wide lead. You know, there's a little bit of movement down in the second tier of candidates, if you will. You have Nikki Haley and Vivek Ramaswamy swap places a little bit, but we're still talking about single digits there for them. And there's something that stood out for me I want to show everybody. When we ask people, okay, are you paying attention to this race? We're getting closer to Iowa, closer to New Hampshire, right? You might expect that to be big. Well, well, no. It's a third, just a third of GOP primary voters who say they're saying, is following this race very closely. I think that raises the political question. If you are trailing Donald Trump, how do you break through when not a lot of folks are paying attention to this? Maybe because Trump has such a wide lead, Nancy. Interesting. Uh, one group we know is paying very close attention is the Trump campaign. Finn, what are they saying about not just polls like this that show them far ahead uh, among their Republican rivals, but also these new polls that came out this right. weekend showing him beating President Biden, even in battleground states? Uh, they told me that, you know, despite some of these legal hurdles that they're uh, experiencing, obviously Donald Trump is back in court today in Manhattan. Uh, their focus, their campaign's focus on some core issues, inflation, crime, immigration, and war. They're essentially their position on, on uh, uh, their anti-war almost position, if you will, uh, essentially saying by focusing on those issues, uh, they have gained not only in the primary battle here, but also overall in a hypothetical matchup, as we saw both in Anthony's poll and also, but also in the New York Times Siena poll, we saw the, the battleground lead uh, that he currently holds uh, versus pr uh, President Biden. Interesting that they think that this is an, an issue based lead, especially as that we see the former president day after day in courtrooms, not necessarily talking about those issues. Anthony, let me ask you uh, about. Uh, the GOP candidates who have dropped out, ha has that changed or scrambled this field in any way? Does it mean anything for the remaining candidates? So two things. One is you want to understand Donald Trump has something of a floor. There's just over a quarter of voters, and this has been rather consistent, who are saying they're only considering him. And a crowded field, that could put a good floor under him that gives him a huge advantage. There's another half that are considering Donald Trump and some other candidates. And so, okay, as other candidates, maybe some others drop out. When you ask voters to rank things, he still, Donald Trump could still pick up some votes from consideration. And it's not clear who benefits, but I will say this. He's still the central focus of this. When you ask people, okay, what will help you finally decide? The top answer is seeing what happens with Donald Trump. So he's still the center of attention, even for people who are still a little bit on the fence. And watching the debates comes in second to that, Nancy. So this old idea that perhaps if some candidates were to drop out of the race, it would consolidate support against a second tier candidate. You're saying actually some of those votes may very well just go directly to Donald Trump. Yes, some of them would go to Donald Trump because he's being considered by some people who aren't voting for him. Uh, Ron DeSantis could stand to gain a little bit in that consolidation based on our polling, but not nearly enough to really be anywhere close to Trump. And then Nikki Haley, who's currently, as you say, she's currently gained a little bit, but she hasn't been able to convert that slightly larger number of, of people who are considering her into actual first vote choice. All of that's been holding in place, Nancy. And Finn, a another poll that got a lot of attention this weekend was right. this New York Times poll that found that in five of six battleground states that President Biden won 
back in 2020. He's now trailing by four points, five points, even 10, 10 points, points in yeah. Nevada. How's the Biden campaign reacting to that? No, I just spoke to a uh, senior Biden campaign official who told me that essentially that overall their message uh, in reaction to these polls is essentially that everyone should, quote, calm down. It's still a year away until Election Day 2024. Uh, and they believe that People, essentially, voters haven't really been paying attention. They haven't really been engaged uh, in the uh, primary battle and, and like the, in the current status of the race right now. However, uh, with time, with more messaging, uh, they think uh, they said that the millions that they've spent right now in messaging on ads, Nancy, what's only going to increase. They, they're calling it a drop in the bucket. So they think that this will also ignite. Uh, some of those folks who haven't been paying attention, some of their supporters that haven't been paying attention to be more focused and realize that the, uh, about, you know, that the trajectory of these polls, uh, that possibility uh, could essentially, you know, cause them just to be more involved. If there's one thing Anthony always reminds us, it's that polls, especially polls a year out, do not necessarily predict right. what's going to happen on Election Day. Uh, but, Anthony, one thing the Biden campaign argues uh, is more predictive are, are elections, like the ones that are taking place tomorrow uh, across the country in states like Ohio, Virginia. They say those are much better predictors of what's going to happen one year from now. What are you going to be watching for tomorrow? Well, tomorrow it focuses on the abortion issue. Now, we know from the midterms in 22 that was motivating for Democrats. We know from current polls that's motivating for Democrats. So you've got a state like Ohio that's been trending Republican. Donald Trump won it fairly easily. But we've seen in some red Republican states where once the abortion issue goes to the voters, the pro-abortion rights side has actually done a little better than that and in, and, in fact, has prevailed. In a referendum, I'm going to be watching the vote patterns compared to the referendum that they held back in August, where some, some said that was sort of a proxy for what's going to happen. Well, that was where the pro-abortion right side prevailed. So that's a way to start to gauge just how much abortion might affect some Republican swing or turnout, motivation. Like Finn said, that's going to be really important for Democrats because right now they're trailing. Republicans in motivation, Nancy. So is that what you're watching for as well tomorrow, Finn, is, is whether this abortion issue has retained its potency in races around the country? Absolutely, Nancy. Not just in Ohio, but you're seeing it's a core issue in the gubernatorial battles in Kentucky and Mississippi, the Virginia legislative elections. The abortion rights is a core issue. And, you know, if there is uh, any sort of blue gains here that we see tomorrow, mm -hmm. I think they will be a result because of that issue and the galvanizing effect that it could still have amongst that those base voters. If you looked at the New York Times Siena College poll, one of the most positive outcomes of that poll was the fact that President Biden actually uh, still had a, a, a good amount of support uh, it, it, in response to that issue. Right, because that's a that's been a chief motivator, perhaps the chief motivator for Democrats over the past uh, year, year and a half or so. Finn Gomez, Anthony Salvanto, thank you both so much for being here. Appreciate it.